the entrance antiphon. O chosen people, proclaim the mighty works of him who called you out of darkness. This wonderful light. Alleluia. Good morning. Good morning. Today's Mass is being offered for Mr. Paul Blanche. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Today is Saturday, and uh, when there's not a required memorial, as there is today, we have the option of offering a Mass to honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. So today we're going to use a special Mass called Our Lady, Mother of the Church. Let us come before the Lord now to confess our sins and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, whose only begotten Son, as he hung upon the cross, chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, to be our mother also. Grant we pray that with her loving help, your church may be more fruitful day by day, and, exulting in the holiness of her children, may draw to her embrace all the families of peoples. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the Twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the Spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to the task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. This proposal was accepted by the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us place our trust Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp with the ten-string lyre. Chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. 
See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ is risen, who made all things. He has shown mercy on all people. Alleluia, Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When it was evening, the disciples of Jesus went down to the sea, embarked in a boat, and went across the sea to Capernaum. It had already grown dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea was stirred up because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they began to be afraid. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. They wanted to take him into the boat, but the boat immediately arrived at the shore to which they were heading. The Gospel of the Lord. So just a few days ago, we, we heard the, uh, the story of the first Christian community. Uh, and it said that everybody was of one heart and one mind. They were in perfect accord. There was so complete unity. You can almost imagine them sitting around the campfire singing, Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya, right? Well, if you thought that sounded a little too idyllic, you're right because we get to hear what happens soon after that in today's gospel. So a dispute arises because remember, everybody was bringing all their property and their food donations and everything and giving it to uh, a group of disciples to be distributed according to need. And uh, there were two different language groups in the original Christian community. Those whose primary language was Greek and those whose primary language was Hebrew or Aramaic. And so we hear that the Greek-speaking widows, the ones of those whose husbands have died, the Greek-speaking widows feel they're being shortchanged in the distribution of food. They're looking to see where the food's going and all the food's going to the people who speak Hebrew or Aramaic and not to them. And they're not happy. And so they complain. Uh, so apparently there was some racial or ethnic prejudice going on in the first Christian community. What do you think about that? Otherwise, why weren't they getting equal parts? They weren't. So there had to be some prejudice, or some, uh, some, at least some strong neglect. So the 12, Apostles who are supposed to be preaching the word and doing the preaching and healing ministry and the teaching ministry, all of a sudden now, they're spending all of their time refereeing disputes about food distribution. And so it occurs to them as they pray that it's time to get some helpers in the process. And so they come up with a, a brilliant idea inspired by the Holy Spirit uh, they asked the group, they asked the group of Hellenist widows, the ones complaining, pick seven reputable men among you, filled with the spirit and wisdom, and we will appoint them to this task of food distribution so that we can concentrate on prayer and ministry of the word. And it says the proposal was acceptable to the whole community, and so it names the seven people they chose Stephen and Philip and Parmenas and Nicholas of Antioch and so forth, the seven of them. 
And then they presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. So this becomes the forerunners of deacons, modern day deacons, who are ordained to serve the community, especially in the ministry of need. And then, and then with that, the word of God through the apostles continued to spread. The number of disciples continued to increase. And even a group of Jewish priests were becoming obedient to the Christian faith. So all of this happened. So this real problem, true problem developed in the early church that Luke doesn't sugarcoat it. After just recently, he had said it was all, you know, uh, roses. It turns out it wasn't. There was a dispute. And the apostles, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, decided what to do. And I can't help but wonder, since this was so very early on in the, in the history of the church, I can't help but wonder if the Blessed Mother, who was given by Jesus to this community of disciples and apostles, I can't help if, but believe that she was either a part of this discernment, or at least she was in the corner with her hands folded praying for everybody to come up with this uh, this solution to the problem. And so I think, uh, I think this just tells us that we shouldn't expect anything less today. Because of uh, original sin, we will always have disputes. Somebody is always gonna feel neglected and that complaint will have to be evaluated and when it's legitimate, a solution will need to be found. And uh, so we need to constantly pray for the leaders of families as moms and dads have to constantly referee disputes between their children and figure out who's got the better argument and who's got the short end of the stick. And the same thing happens in the business world and in communities and it certainly happens in the church. So we constantly need ongoing prayer and discernment how to solve disputes when somebody feels slighted when they feel like they're the victim of prejudice, when they feel they've been shortchanged. Is it legitimate? And if so, how can we resolve it and go back to more of a situation of peace and harmony? And I believe Our Lady is an important part of that whole process. Uh, so let's, uh, let's look at this early uh, trauma in the church and see how it was solved with wisdom and guidance from God and ask the Lord when we find ourselves in that same situation, may we seek similarly the wisdom and guidance of the Holy Spirit and the help and the intercession of our Lady. Let's bring our prayers and needs to God, our loving Father. For the apostolic, apostolic leadership of the church, May God continue to bless, strengthen, and uphold them in their ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold leadership positions in our world, may God be their guide as they navigate the most challenging of circumstances. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel distraught, or lost in life. May God come to them in their anxiety and bring them peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us call upon our Lady for several intentions. First of all, that we may take seriously the call to care for the hungry and needy of our world. Uh, we 
continue to pray for peace in Ukraine. We continue to pray for all of our loved ones who are listed on our Easter Memorial Board. Let's invite our ladies of intercession for these intentions. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And now we pray our family prayer. Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Ramsakor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our Mother, and ask you to help us in the battle today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Mount Sakura, hasten to help us. Mother Henrietta de Leo, pray for us that we may be the Holy Family. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our offerings, O Lord, and transform them into the mystery of salvation, so that by its power we may be set aflame with the charity of the Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, and with her may be united more closely in the work of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, and always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to proclaim your greatness with due praise as we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. For receiving your word in her immaculate heart, she was found worthy to conceive him in her virgin's womb. And giving birth to the Creator, she nurtured the beginnings of the Church. Standing beside the cross, she received a testament of divine love and took to herself the sons and daughters, all those who by the death of Christ are born into heavenly life. As the apostles awaited the spirit you had promised, she joined her supplication to the prayers of the disciples and so became the pattern of the church at prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she accompanies your pilgrim church with a mother's love and watches in kindness over the church's homeward steps until the Lord's day shall come in glorious splendor. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them in light of the fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by my teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Communion antiphon, 
Father, I wish that where I am, those you gave me may also be with me, that they may see the glory that you gave me. Alleluia. Let us pray. Having received the pledge of redemption and of life, we humbly pray, O Lord, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary's motherly help, your church may teach all nations by proclaiming the gospel, and through the grace of the outpouring of the Spirit, fill the whole earth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, this morning we have a Father, Son, Hunt Club at uh, City Park beginning at 11 o'clock a.m. This is a hospitality weekend, so we'll have refreshments at all the masses. The uh, 10 o'clock mass tomorrow is our family school mass. Our Easter concert is at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Everyone is invited. Uh, Wednesday night, we will show the Fatima movie uh, at 6.30 in 6.30 p.m. in St. Joseph Hall. If you would like to order a complimentary meal, to eat before the movie, please call the office.
us by Monday. That's the deadline to work. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great weekend. And we do have a funeral in church at 11 o'clock today, so we'll leave everything on and open. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God, you can we humbly pray, and do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into thou Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls.